Hello everybody, this is Charles Barnett of AGN and I have a, an amazing uh, revelation for us today. Um, we'll just call it His Yoke is Easy. His meaning Jesus Christ, His Yoke is Easy. I'm going to go ahead and read uh, some scripture to you and then give you, um, it's not going to take long, just some short revelatory uh, blessings that God gave me. And we're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28, 29, and 30. We're in my new Ethiopian Bible. A lot of this is old English, like the King James and the Geneva. So it reads, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, I've heard that preached and taught many a times, and a lot of times it's talking about the burdens of life and the hardships and our sin and the burden of sin and come to Jesus and he will take your burdens and, you know, and, and that's all good and well. But when you start to dive into what Jesus is talking about in this scripture, it takes on a whole different light and a different perspective. Excuse me. First of all, he's talking to his disciples. He's talking to his Jews who were under the bondage of Roman rule and were um, under also bondage and heavy laden by Judaism, the law of Moses, and more so than that, the corrupt leaders of uh, and religious leaders of that day that was placing heavy burdens on people, which they wouldn't even lift themselves, basically. So... In the light of that, I, I looked it up and the word yoke means a cross beam, like on balances, you know, you got a cross beam and a focal point and, uh, and a supporting uh, um, post and then you got your scales. It's also the cross beam where they would yoke two animals together to get them going in a direction to work or a single yoke that would be attached to reins to do the same thing, but it yoked them together and it's a cross beam, which is heavy. It's got a heavy, it's heavy, it's, it's, it's solid. And so what, what Jesus is talking about here is right off the bat, he's telling his disciples that Come to me, all you that are heavy laden. And when he says heavy laden, he's talking about the religion of that day. The law of Moses, Judaism, but more so than that was that they couldn't within their flesh ever fulfill the law. And the priest, high priest and the priest, the Pharisees, everybody they were so corrupt that they added more burdens, religious burdens and and corrupt twisting of the law upon the people. So he that's what he's saying there is you're heavy laden. Come to me and I'll give you rest. Jesus was saying as that I am the answer to all this mess. I am the answer to these heavy burdens. I am the answer to these things that you cannot bear on your own. So before we just talk about it's the burden of sin, no, it was a burden of religion too. It was the burden of mankind in control and being religious and taking his traditions to a whole new level that burdened the people. And it was just as bad as the burden of sin. So let me read it to you again. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. You're working so hard, but
but it seems like your work just is making things worse. Because it is. He says, I'll give you rest. And then he's telling you how to do it. Take my yoke. Wait, you have a yoke, Jesus? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Hey, learn it my way. Because your way and the religious way is not working. He says, learn of me for I am meek and lowly of heart. And you will find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, look at my yoke. And I thought to myself, you know what? Nobody's ever, we've never dove into that. We've never done a deep dive onto what his yoke is. Because his yoke is easy. His burden is light. And I looked it up and it means the same exact thing. It's a cross beam that you get yoked unto. And so when I thought about that, the Lord gave me a vision. And in the vision, I saw Jesus with a cross beam and he yoked it up. And I yoked myself to it. And he says, that's what it is. And I thought to myself, okay, so how does this work? I'm yoked up to Jesus. I took upon his yoke. And he said this, he goes, then he showed me the cross. He goes, I already bore the burden. That's why my yoke is easy. Because I put it in my flesh on the cross. So when you yoke yourself to me, I now take that burden. I take your hardships. I take all of the heavy laden and the things that you yourself, your sinful nature, mankind, religious mankind, your denomination and their rule book, you know, traditions and policies and whatnot, rudiments of men, all of that. He says, I took it. So when we yoke ourselves up to him, the burden and the heaviness now transfers to Christ because he already paid the price. He already took the burden. He already bore it in his flesh on the cross. And that's why he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And he says, all you have to do is believe me and obey me and submit and commit to me. And it blew my mind. And the Lord said, it really is that easy. The hard part is we, we have a hard time giving up control. You know, some people, they read in the Bible where Peter says, repent for your sins. And we're like, I don't need to repent. I'm not a bad person. It's not about you being a bad person. It's that you're born in with a sinful nature and you must be born again. Because sin passed upon all men. So he says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's how you originally take the yoke for the remission of your sins. Dunk you under in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's, that's Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's how we link up. But we got to stay linked up. Excuse me. And the Lord said, that's why when we try to do things in our own flesh and make our own decisions and we don't console God and we think we got it all under control and we can do this thing, it always gets worse. And it always turns out bad. And it seems like the more we try, the worse it gets. Well, that's because the more we get ourselves stuck, the worse we get ourselves stuck because we're trying to do it. And here's the thing. Mankind was never meant to bear the burden by himself. We aren't. We are meant to trust in a Savior, to link up to a Lord and Savior. We need a God, the God, to save us. We can't save ourselves. We cannot bear the burden by ourselves. We were never meant to bear the burden. We were always meant to be in relationship, starting with faith and obedience to God. And then he, in turn, rewards us, rewards our faith and our obedience with blessings, with guidance, with the lifting of burdens, 
It makes perfect sense. So, just thinking of the vision God gave me about us yoking ourselves up to Jesus and him carrying it for us and it being in his strength and not our own and all of a sudden lifting our burdens and making it light and making it easy. Now let me read it to you again now that you have the revelation. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And once you hook up to it, now you can have rest for your souls. So the moral of the story, the deep revelation is, the more we console Jesus, the more we get direction from Jesus, the more we obey Jesus, the more we obey his written word and the voice of his spirit, the more the burdens are released. The more the things that we deal with and, the, and the, the trials and the tribulations, the easier it becomes, the more we obey and the more we believe. The just shall walk by faith. Why sometimes is it hard and it keeps getting harder and it's harder and harder? Because we think we can do it on our own. Let's be honest. I got this. I don't need your help. I don't even need the Lord. This is easy. I got this thing. That's one of the worst things and the stuck in the mud issue about religion is that you get so used to the habits of religious rituals that you don't even have to be trying hard because it's a habit. You go, most people... Their religion, their relationship with Jesus is very, very minuscule. It's very shallow because once or twice a week, they go to a building, to a denomination, to some organized institutional religion. Doesn't matter what it is. They go to it and they think it's a church, not knowing that they are the church, that the building is not the church, the denomination is not the church. The church has called out people as scriptural. But they think they go to a church and they're going to check in and they're going to sing some songs and they're going to listen to a preacher. They're going to throw some money in a plate and they're going to tell people, God bless you. They're going to pray a little bit. They're going to praise a little bit and then they go home. And they do it day in and day out, year after year to the point where they can be in the middle of that church service singing a song but thinking about the food they're going to eat for lunch and they're going to be over there praying and telling jesus oh yes lord i do need i need to get better lord yeah i do and they're thinking about okay i gotta pay this bill okay yeah you know what uh you know i i gotta oh yeah i gotta go to work tomorrow uh, oh yeah i gotta go to the store and buy this and it's like they're going through the motions their mind is everywhere else. Oh, I got to hurry up and get to home so I can watch a football game. You know, doing everything in their own flesh. And then they wonder why things don't seem to get better. Because that's the same thing that the Pharisees were doing to the people. Only their burdens were harsh burdens. Telling them how they were had the different classes of people and the peasants were lowly and then they had a money scam scheme hoax going on where you bring your your animal to be sacrificed and oh we got to inspect it and they take it in the back and look at it and there was nothing wrong with the animal right because the people knew better than to bring an animal with blemish and they said oh we found a blemish on it um, we can't accept it. Oh, come on, man. Hey, but don't worry about it. We have one in the back to substitute and we'll sell it to you. And they sold them their own animal. Corruption. So much. I mean, it's just a money grab. That's the way all denominations that have a 5013C is the same way. Why do they got a 5013C? So they can be nonprofit and take money tax free. Plain and simple. If they didn't worry about taking money tax-free, they wouldn't need a 5013C. Truth. So how do you get rid of these burdens? 
How do you get rid of the burdens of man? How do you get rid of the burdens of religion? How do you get rid of these secular burdens? How do you get rid of the burden of sin? Simple. Take my yoke upon me, Jesus said, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. He goes, I'm not like your religious leader. I'm not beating you on the head to try and you better do as I say and so you can make us look good. He says, I'm not like that. He says, I'm in this for the long haul. I already died for your sins. I'll work with you. I'll give you my spirit and I'll clean you from the inside out. Because I'm in this for all of your life because I gave my life. I am meek and lowly in heart. He says, for my yoke is easy. In other words, as soon as you link up to it, I take your burden. I carry it because I am God and I am the one that's powerful. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So you want life to get easier? Link up to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yoke up to Jesus. Obey Jesus. It starts with the new birth experience to be born again of water and spirit. Baptism in Jesus' name like the Bible teaches. Not like the what the other preachers would teach. They have their own form of baptism that's it's not even correct. you got to pronounce the name of Jesus when you go under the water. Yes, you do. It's what scriptures teach in the book of Acts. Yep. Romans chapter 6. Know you not when you were baptized into Christ? That means all the apostles... And the apostolic prophetic movement of the New Testament, the early church, they baptized in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. They sought to receive the Holy Ghost. And they received the Holy Ghost and they stayed full of the Holy Ghost. They linked up to Jesus. And they stayed linked up to Jesus because they stood steadfast in the apostles' doctrine of breaking the bread, fellowship, house to house, prayer meetings, sharing the word out in the open, out in the marketplaces, right? Under Solomon's porch by the temple. That's right. It was Solomon's porch. They went there to pray and to evangelize and to share the word of God. That's what they did. They didn't do like what some people call church today. They didn't do none of that. That ain't even church. That's religious, uh, a religious, uh, what do they call it? That's religious tradition. It's a, it's a knockoff. And it's a poor one at that. It's a cheap knockoff of the true because they met house to house. Yep. They met house to house. And it wasn't just, they made disciples. They didn't make pew sitters or, or, or couch potatoes that just sit down for two hours and say amen and then go home. No. That's, those, those are religious burdens. That's not what Jesus does. Amen. Praise God. So he says, take my yoke upon me because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And then and only then will you find rest for your souls. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you receive this revelation, this understanding. I pray that you receive the strength to obey God, to obey Jesus Christ, his word and his voice to obey his prompting to come out of religion, to come out of sin, to come out of secular madness, to come out of all these things that are against Christ and yoke up to him and obey his word and go back to the original the way the first apostles did it and do it their way. And come out from all these religions and denominations that are doing everything according to their rule book. Adding burdens and yokes upon you. Be delivered and be set free. Receive the revelation and understanding. And come to the apostolic prophetic truth of the early church. And obey Jesus Christ. And find rest for your souls in Jesus name. God bless you. This is Charles Barnett. It really is that easy. His yoke is easy. God bless you. Peace of Christ unto you. In Jesus' name.